Hi, gentlemen. It's great uh, to be back after a pretty long disconnect, I guess. Uh, the reason, of course, being I was pretty busy. And apart from that, uh, I would say I would be honest enough to admit that a few doubts did come into my mind because the last few videos hardly generated any views. So I was left wondering if it is the YouTube which is uh, playing its mischief or whether my all the effort which I'm putting in is reaching the right people who are interested and so on and so forth. But fortunately for me, uh, the lot of guys who uh, uh, joined my hydraulic training programs, uh, they reconfirm physically that uh, my videos have been very useful for them. It helped them to clear their exams. And uh, so I got motivated again and there I'm back into the ring with uh, hopefully with uh, the same energy levels. Uh, thank you all of you for having uh, really supported and engaged me and hope you will continue to do so. Uh, the topic for this particular uh, video I have chosen is, uh, it's been a very complex topic. Uh, in fact, uh, the junior engineers find it reasonably tough. It is about reverse power trip. Why do we need one and how to understand it from the example of a, a train locomotive. I'm just giving an analogy. Hi, you are watching Chief Engineer's Tea Time Talk and I am uh, Ramesh and I will be the pilot who will guide you to this channel. And uh, let's not wait, we will jump into the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time. Thank you. What you see here is a diesel engine running at 80 km per hour. Obviously, we need uh, some fuel to make it run. Let us talk about the amount of fuel required in terms of fuel rack readings for the sake of simple understanding. Imagine that this engine has a fuel rack with maximum reading of 10 and now you can see that it is running on fuel rack reading 1. So it means that the fuel quantity equal to 1 rack is required to make it run and move at 80 km per hour. Here you can see two similar diesel engines, engine 1 and engine 2 together are pulling the train at 80 km per hour. And now you can also see that each of the diesel engine is running with a fuel rack reading of 4. Now, what does that mean in terms of one single engine? It means that a fuel quantity, fuel rack quantity of 1 is required to run the engine itself at 80 km per hour. And 3 fuel racks are required to contribute to pull the train at a speed of 80 km per hour. So, the total fuel required in terms of fuel rack to pull only the train at 80 km per hour works out to 6 fuel racks. Now suppose in one of the engines, say in engine number 2, the fuel stops flowing due to some problem. Now what will happen? It is obvious that engine 1 will continue to pull not only the train but also engine 2 at the same speed since engine 2 is connected to engine 1. So what will be the reading of the fuel racks? Yeah, you guessed it right, most of you I believe. Yes, fuel rack of engine 2 is going to be zero because the governor has realized that there is no need to release the fuel to the engine since the engine is already running at 80 km per hour. This is because engine 1 is pulling engine 2. Had it not been for engine 1, engine 2 would have stopped. So overall, let's summarize the stuff. Fuel rack of engine 1 will be at 8. That is because it needs one rack of uh, fuel to move itself at 80 km per hour. It needs one rack to pull engine 1 at 80 km per hour and it needs 6 racks to pull the train at 80 km per hour. Engine 1 instead of contributing in pulling the train is in fact getting pulled itself. Now we call that engine number 2 is in reverse power. You can see that the train can travel maybe 1000 km in this condition without any problem. Then the question is, what is the problem? Why are we terrified in the engine room when the generator number 2 goes into reverse power? Ah, here comes the million dollar answer. Now let us imagine that the lube oil pressure of engine 2 has failed. In normal condition, when the engine was running alone, what would have happened? The engine would have tripped. How? By the governor putting the fuel rack to zero. But in our case, in this case, what will happen? Engine 2 lube oil pressure has dropped. And it needs to stop. How? By putting the fuel rack to zero. But it is already running at zero. This engine cannot stop because it is being pulled by engine one. Result? Complete damage to the crankshaft of engine two. I hope all of you have realized that in case of any failure which calls for the engine to be stopped, cannot happen. So as long as the engine is on reverse power, we are at a great risk that in the event of any failure in the engine, 
which requires it to be stopped the engine can never be stopped to prevent irreversible damage so to conclude we say that in the engine room when two generators are running in parallel since the governor cannot stop engine by cutting off fuel we need to have a reverse power trip where we need to electrically isolate the problem engine to make it come to a halt and prevent irreversible damage hope you all enjoyed this video see you in the next video thank you so much it was a pleasure to make this video for all of you guys and hope all the best for your exams